Hello everybody, MechFrog here. Today we're gonna have a conversation with CSO Suge, who is a awesome painter from uh, Camo Specs Online, and he agreed to come down and have a little conversation. We'll talk Battletech and whatever else springs to mind. Um, so why don't we great. introduce yourself here and, and we'll get going. Yeah, absolutely, man. Uh, yeah, my name is Eric. Uh, I go by Suge um, on uh, CSO. Uh, name comes from my uh, my grandmother. My grandmother was a, uh, she still is, because she's still around. She's a, uh, she's from Japan and uh, she was a Japanese refugee during World War II and that's her family name. So pretty rare last name in Japan. And uh, it goes, it goes way back and that's a whole different story. That would, that would take us a long time to go into, but uh, that's where that name comes from. So, Very cool. Uh, from, from down southeast, North Carolina area. Um, and uh, yeah, I don't know, not much else to tell. I've been doing this for like a um, couple of years, actually about a little over two years, painting at least, mm -hmm. um, in, in the battle text. Not, not in general. That, like I said, that's another very long story that I could, I can get into. I'm not a 40k refugee. I've been painting things, but on a much larger, larger scale. Sure. Not, uh, not tiny robots. Big robots. Not a well, robot like machinery. Let's see. <laughs> well, let's let's see if we can get kind of the short. Or what's your BattleTech story? Because everybody has their BattleTech story. I want to yeah. know yours. So, so, uh, I am. I am now. I just turned 40. So my life is officially over at this point. Um, and uh, when I was a kid, so so during the, uh, I guess it was like early, mid nineties. Uh, are you familiar with an old bookstore that used to be in malls called Babbage's? Oh yes. This store? Oh yes. Okay. So um, when I was a kid, I, I used to go to Babbage's and I used to sit in the middle of the hallway or in the aisle in between bookshelves and I would like pour over battle tech technical readouts as a little kid. I was like eight, nine years old. Just loved them. Absolutely loved, them. loved the illustrations, the artwork. Uh, had no clue what battle tech was at the time and, and what the manuals were actually used for. Um, all I knew was that I couldn't afford them and my parents wouldn't buy them for me. But I thought they were really neat. So so that kind of got me into it. And then um, my, um, my big, big involvement in um, in BattleTech, I guess, kind of skyrocketed when uh, when I did stuff like Mech Commander. That was kind of mm -hmm. like the big uh, Mech Warrior slash Mech BattleTech game that I played. Um, so I, I got mostly involved in um, in BattleTech from Gabe, not from um, you know the uh, the tabletop. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you know I was always looking for Mech Warrior or Mech Commander, Mech Commander Two. Um, and then, man, I always had like a like a long time. Man, I wish they came out with that again. Um, and then years, years down the road goes by, and I end up uh, running into BattleTech on Steam. Mm -hmm. And so then the started HBS man, BattleTech. Yeah, yeah. yeah exactly, yeah. exactly. And then I, I played the, the gosh the life out of that game, um, and uh, and then started playing Mech Warrior Five, and that's when I finally started getting more into painting because you could paint the mechs mm -hmm. in the game mm -hmm. it'd be really cool if you could do this in real life like i was totally oblivious if only to any you know they yeah, should make these into models that you could paint yeah. it's a brilliant yeah. idea why hasn't right. anybody thought about this before right <laughs> um yeah. mind you this has been going on for decades right um and um and then sure enough Right, and uh, I started looking into it on uh, on YouTube, and and that's how actually I ran into Justin's chat mm -hmm. from Death Ray Designs because you know mm -hmm. he, he was he was doing YouTube as well. Um, and uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's bound to Sorry. happen to me here any minute too. So. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. Um, yeah, it just kind of skyrocketed from there. And um, I, I found Justin's YouTube and he had these like really easy to understand tutorials on how to paint. Mm -hmm. So I kind of took that and ran with it. I actually ran into a couple of your videos as well. I'm sorry. Um, on how to paint. <laughs> <laughs> no, they were good. They've they were gotten good. better, hopefully. <laughs> um, and and I kind of it kind of just skyrocketed from there on that end. Mm -hmm. And that goes into the battle side. Uh, on the painting side of it, um, that's my birthday. Um, uh, if, <laughs> if you can tell, um, on the painting side, 
my um, my dad, my grandfather, and I have been restoring cars for mm -hmm. even before I was born. So so they started on like Mustangs and Triumph TR6s, mm -hmm. uh, steel cars, and then they graduated into fireplace. So they worked on vintage Corvettes for mm -hmm. like decades. That's great. Um, so ever since I was four years old, I was underneath cars scraping underside bars and painting things and doing uh, uh, interior work and and timing camshafts and engines and uh, you name it we were doing it and that was my grandfather's livelihood for a long long time he passed away uh seven eight years ago now uh, but you can see kind of like if i step aside like you know like the the you know, like the awards and the plaques mm -hmm. he was in that magazine for a little bit so that was mm -hmm. kind of cool Cool. Um, and so, so my painting kind of stems from that. And uh, as well as I did take a couple of uh, uh, drawing classes when I was an undergrad. Mm -hmm. um, I was set to uh, to graduate a semester early and uh, to stay on my mom's uh, health insurance. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to learn how to how to draw. So I learned how to draw and cook. That's awesome. so my wife loves it. So it's awesome. So you're kind of continuing the legacy. They're just the... The painting is just a slightly smaller scale. That's great. I should send you. So, I should send my 15 year old over there. He's really into cars lately, and I am not a car guy. Yeah. I am. I am a bookworm nerd, and somehow yeah. I ended up with a teenager who's like into football and fishing <laughs> and wants right. to piece together cars. So like, I don't even change my own oil. Sorry, I. The, I put the I put the gas yeah. in and I change the like bring the car in to change oil. Otherwise, it just works. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's so it's so funny. Um, I, I'm I, I'm definitely a, a nerd at heart as well. I mean, I don't think that I would be into all of this stuff. I mean, um, I was into anime growing up as a kid, you know. And, and I think part of the art, how I paint, definitely has a little bit of like cell shading, like reflect like some of that influence mm. in it. Um, you know, from like like uh, Dragon Ball Z and, and uh, you know, Bleach and, and Naruto and One Piece, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a little bit of that. And then I, I lived in Japan for several several years as well oh. um, due to uh, getting deployed overseas. Mm -hmm. So my wife uh, used to be active duty. I was a military contractor for a number of years. And um, so so there is some of that some of that influence, some of the Japanese influence in there as well. And then me being part Japanese, like, it's probably why I paint Draconis Combines. There you go. Is that why you <laughs> everything has to be painted red, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> some shade of red, right? <laughs> well, and after, so, after the Panther video, apparently I'm DCMS now, so I guess that's why everything's red. And, yeah. You know, the, the, so sacral. So. <laughs> the, the dragon so. is forever. Right? Um, <laughs> Gonna turn this hat. Which, which, I, well, that, that's another one of my favorites, by the way. So I love bad guys, but that's that's maybe that's why I paint her kind of scum as well. Um, yeah. You know, um, it's uh, I, I love I love the game in general. I love all the factions. I love the palace intrigue that's that's involved in in the um, in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, there is there's definitely more more enough more than enough of that to go around. I'm just kind of like looking right now as I'm looking down. Um, you know, there's just so much variety in the game, which is really cool. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, yeah, it's just it's just so much fun to do this. And um, you know, there's a little little piece of me and, and my grandmother out there in the universe now because of that name. So Absolutely, it's, it's cool. Very be cool. able to uh, and just spread obviously spread that goodwill, you know, among everyone else as well, like that. Um, you know, encouragement, and oh, for absolutely. a lot of folks, you know, this is their escape, right? So mm -hmm. I know for me it is, like my, my job, you know, I work in a hospital, my job is nuts on a daily, day-to-day -day -day basis. So for me, um, I use a lot of this as like a cathartic release. Absolutely. That's really cool. Yeah, one of the reasons why I've kind of been so pro CSO and kind of making sure I try to cheer right. you cheer you guys on as much as i can to just the, the positivity that yeah. camo specs online has shows toward just everybody if you're painting something oh. they're they're cheering you on and um if you if you're yeah. doing like can you can you critique this in the discord channel and they'll just 
all of this positivity and here's what I would try doing and it's not there's no negativity we're like oh that sucks or you need to work harder no it's it's more like hey this is great could you try this I bet you would get an even better result so I just love that kind of positivity out of the community that community well I think you know it's it's you know everybody needs uh concerned to feedback one way or another right mm -hmm. um and you're never going to improve right unless you try something new and if you have some like sounding board right to to kind of bounce ideas off it's like hey what do you think of this like yeah it's great or what do you think of this oh well you know maybe you know have you tried this and i like to try to pose a lot of those things as questions mm -hmm. um so, hey what do you think about the canopy or what do you think about this you know maybe you know have you tried this or this technique or that technique, stuff like that, I think is beneficial. Instead of, tear, instead of tearing someone down, that that's totally unproductive. Yeah. And and you know, this is so niche. And I said this during during a conversation I had with Justin not too long ago. This is so niche that um, you know if, if we continue to gatekeep and continue to to you know uh, let's say foster a community or a culture of toxicity that um, sooner or later, it's be like, you know, you're gonna go to your hobby shop and be like, yeah, yeah, that's that guy. That only guy that plays Battletech, right? And he goes and plays with this one other guy in the store. And um, and then when he goes, you know, we see him once every couple of months and it's like, that's not, that's not beneficial for the community at all. Yeah. So yeah, it's we just, try to be- it's, it's a good thing that it's small in some ways, like Battletech's ob yeah. Battletech's obviously growing significantly over yes. the last few years, but it is actually small enough now that your actions really matter in the, in the community, like even going down to the local game shop, your right. positivity, your willingness to play with others and do so in a way that's make sure everybody's having fun and you're not just bringing out your Lance of Annihilators and an right. annihilating them and and then they right. never want to play again um so mm -hmm. it really does matter and people who want to have an effect on the community this is a great opportunity because having an impact on like the, say for example the warhammer community warhammer 40k having an impact on that community is really tough because there's there are just tens of thousands of players and then you, your voice gets lost in the fray but with Battletech, it really is still small enough that if you're showing leadership and you're really kind of setting an example here, and again, we can't control what other people do. There's my, te my gonna put my teacher hat back on here for a second. Yeah, we yeah. can't control what other people do, but we can control right. ourselves and we can control how we react to others. And so if we set the example and say, well, okay, well, I'm gonna be the model of what I want to see in others, and hopefully that will spread and, and the positivity will spread. And I, I think we've seen that with um, a, quite a few of the Battletech creators like on YouTube, we've got uh, Big Red and Sven Vanderplank and just, and, and Tex of course being the being the the really standard bearer for Battletech for so many years when it was really just him <laughs> putting out videos. Yeah, um, but it's been really yeah. amazing to be a part of it uh, part yeah. of it as as Battletech continues to grow, and I'm glad yeah, that Camel Specs is there because you you guys and gals are doing just amazing stuff. We're, we're trying, man. I appreciate it. Yeah, speaking of gals, man, we need some. That'd be nice. It's like it's all dudes right now. We need some female. We need some female artists. That would be okay. A little, a little different perspective on things would be nice. I think so. Yeah, you're gonna get you know, you know to be different. Yeah. Different perspectives always good. Absolutely. So. Um, yeah, they're, they're, they're a fun group of guys. They're really good people. So, and, um, you know, they, uh, they like to, I know, um, I don't know if you're, you know, like Faith, you know, Faith, mm -hmm. or yes. um, you know, that we all try to be as approachable as possible, right? If, mm -hmm. if anyone wants to know how to submit or how to, you know, maybe certain techniques, look, I've not been doing this that long. I mean, the, the experience that I have is through the, the classes that I took in college, as well as you know, from my personal experience on other things, like, you know, I am not, I am not the one and only person that has all this experience. I mean, so many people that have years and years of experience. And Sav Ross, Savage Coyote, I mean, he's been, you know, oh my gosh, like he's been in the community now. I, he's actually one of, I don't know if you know this, he's one of the founders of CSL. Oh, 
So before we go too far down that road, let's, for the people who don't know, what is CSO? What's their mission? Yeah. Um, and then uh, how did you get involved with them? So CSO, Camus Text Online, is a website that's completely dedicated to official paint schemes for Battletech, right? So for anyone that, that is new to this, um, you know, every, uh, you have all these models, all these, all these robots, right? And they all come from different political factions, right? In this galaxy, right? And, and this futuristic galaxy, which is almost in a, in a sense, now it's like a dystopian version of, of where we live, right? I mean, maybe now it's getting a little bit better. With it. Well, that's debatable, right? Um, but with the new ill clan stuff, but um, we have different factions, different groups of, of the galaxy that are vying for power, right? Almost like, um, you know, this big power struggle within the galaxy. And Camus Specs does um, all of the canon faction unit paint schemes for all of these different factions within the Battletech universe. They focus mm -hmm. on that. Um, and they even focus on like, certain uh unique characters or i don't know what you would call them like legendary characters i guess you could say legendary sure. mech warriors right sure. within the universe right mm -hmm. so they focus on that and then they focus on different factions within the entire galaxy of, of the ip um and the canon schemes or the color schemes that are on that website uh are endorsed by catalyst game labs and what you see on the website is the color scheme that that faction is that that's basically how that works um mm -hmm. and all the guys they do their best to um to make sure things are as accurate as possible because if you're looking for a certain paint scheme hey i want to paint like crater cobras love crater cobras by the way or you want to paint like um jade falcon turkina keshek or you want to mm -hmm. paint i don't know why you want to paint plan wolf, but plan wolf right like you know the you need uh, something to shoot tongue -tongue, <laughs> somebody's gonna get mad at me um, <laughs> um, those those schemes, you know, you go on that website, right, and you look for it. You're like, hey, I'll type in Clan Wolf Beta Galaxy, Clan Wolf Alpha, you know, whatever Alpha Galaxy, um, and you'll find it there. Mm -hmm. So we're all volunteers. None of us get paid to do this, um, and we all just kind of have a passion to canonize and to, um, you know, put those those paint schemes kind of like into. Uh, into history in a sense, right? Because as long as that website's out there on the internet, those paint schemes will always be out there. And it's fun too, yeah. because we have models that date like, oh my gosh, like decades. Like when the first guys painted them, like old, mm -hmm. like old metal route part of the models, mm -hmm. all the way up to the new stuff that that's um, out there now. So so that's what they do. Uh, that's their involvement with CGL. And um, yeah, I mean, I guess that's it in a nutshell. Yeah, so it's yeah. it's interesting when kind of looking through the site, sometimes the source for a paint job could just be a line in a novel or you know, where right. you, where the artist, and this is really where your creativity comes into play and the, the artists um, who tackle these challenges, uh, sometimes the descriptions are pretty vague. And so right. you have an opportunity to be creative and come up with, yes. okay, well, what does this gray and red look like on an yes. actual mech? Um, so that must so, be exciting, right? Yes, it is. Now, it's actually really cool. And um, that to me is one of my favorite parts of being in CSO is is doing unrepresented schemes. So so it's, it's a fun segue into why I applied, how I got involved and and where where, you know, kind of my interest in CSO with Battletech. Mm -hmm. So the, the, I started painting, like I said, about two years ago, at least painting miniatures. And um, I, I ended up getting on Discord over at Death Ray Designs and I was painting and, and making, you know, slow improvements on my painting. And I was, man, I was absorbing stuff like a sponge. And I'm funny like that. I, I don't know if I'm OCD. I know I have ADHD. I am diagnosed with that legitimately, um, you know, and I don't take anything for it. Um, but um, maybe this is a way to help me focus on things. Um, and uh, I, I would just send out my photos and, and the models I was painting, and Justin actually reached out to me. Mm. He was in CSO for about a year before, before I was interested and said, hey, you know, 
your your artwork is getting pretty good have you considered submitting to CSO? Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, I, what, what what is that? What is CSO? Like, I, I, I was just painting, right? I actually got yelled at. It. It's that's a whole different story. I actually got started painting these things because I found a bunch of models on Etsy, and then mm -hmm. I got yelled at because um, you know there's some things that are not really official, I guess. You know, they're not part of the, part of the, I don't know. They're copyright, I guess. <laughs> so okay. I'm like, yeah, you can't post those, right? Uh, but that's neither here nor there. We can get at that later. I'm not allowed to paint stuff like that, by the way. That's another thing about CSO, just as a heads up, um, because of the because of the copyright laws. Sure. Um, but. Uh, uh, he was like, "Yeah, you should you should consider doing it." So so I started putting together a packet, and and that goes into your comment about interpreting paint schemes, because one of the criteria for your submission packet is to paint a scheme that's on the CSO website that has a description but doesn't have any models, and it's called the unrepresented unit list. Mm. So um, so what I decided to do was I I picked five models, I painted them up. And then one of them I got, I actually painted two unrepresented unit faction lists, our units. Mm -hmm. And uh, one of them I painted completely incorrectly, which um, that's up to interpretation, right? We talked we talked a little bit about that before. Yeah. But but yeah, after going through it with, with the CSO team, I was like, yeah, yeah, that kind of makes sense. Like that, that was kind of way off base. Um, and... Uh, kind of went down that road and, and I can show you because I have them on the table here um, I can show you the five I originally painted and the one that I had to redo and I can kind of go through that process too um, Why don't you if you're show, show off a couple on yeah, and yeah go ahead so I don't have the greatest lighting in the world because this is not my uh, this is not my workbench um, but the five that I submitted were um, and this is one of the unrepresented units so the the Dragon's Fury, awesome. Oh yeah. So Dragon's Fury was not represented, right? They they had a description of um, it's red with a gray stripe, and the gray stripe is larger or smaller depending on how experienced the unit is. Mm. So I just pretended this guy in this awesome. He's probably a regular dude. He's got a decent amount of experience, you know, not the greatest, but you know, whatever. Not not the worst either, right? Mm. Um, and then I also painted another unrepresented faction, which was um, kind of two rolled into one. So I painted um, Black Warriors, which is a pirate faction as part of the Circinius Federation, way out in like Raspberry Bay slash um, Lyran Commonwealth space. Mm -hmm. um, but they like to disguise themselves as other factions to do like fa false flag attacks out like towards the periphery. Um, and so I painted him as 12th Regulum Hussars, which was also unrepresented, kind of. Um, but they have a pirate flag on the back of their mech, and that designates bad and who's good. So that was the one I did. He was a Zeus. And then on the back of him, he's, he's in the ocean. With his Very best cool basing flag. on that. Thank you. Um, and on the back, he's got, I, I don't know if you can That's see a little it. pirate he's got, flag, yep. Yeah. On the back, man, I love that. I'm going to go back to this at some point, man, because I totally dig this. Uh, but they were like, no. So this I had to paint over. Or I had to paint another model. Mm -hmm. And the reason why was because 12th Regulin Hussars is a brown and tan camel, right? And in mm -hmm. my mind, I was like, yeah, this is this brown and tan. That's camel, right? Because it could be like all of Drab's camo. Mm -hmm. But they wanted they wanted a, like a pattern. Okay. Camel, right? So I had to okay. repaint this. Yeah. So, um, or, or paint another model, right? So, um, we have that one. And then my third submission. Now, I'm going to save that one for the last. Did you have um, And then um, I painted a Crockett in SLDF olive. So, I went with, with old school SLDF cool. colors, mm -hmm. pre, pre uh, succession war. And then I, I wanted to paint a personality. Um, because I'm a, I, I don't care what Big Red says, and he can, he can flame me for this if, if he ever watches this. Like, I, I love Snords Irregulars. That is my favorite mercenary faction. Because I character. love that whole, oh, it's so great. <laughs> it, it, I love that whole, like, Indiana Jones, like, treasure hunting vibe. Like, if I was to transplant, and that's also why I love Interstellar Expeditions. That's also mm -hmm. why I love Explorer 4. We'll get to that in a minute. 
Um, I, I love the idea of uh, just kind of going out there into the wild and finding old technology. If I was if I was one of them, I would be that or I'd be Comstock. Honestly, I'd be the bad guys. Um, and um, you know, for the betterment of humankind, I guess, right? You find that stuff like you know, the whole galaxy got blasted into the Stone Age, and 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 people are like back to like plows and shovels and horses, right? Mm -hmm. um, and to make their lives a little bit better, right? I like that idea, right? And yeah. It kind of goes into yeah, and Rhonda's. Rhonda is such an interesting character, just right. kind of like this yeah. 80s punk, like a thousand right. years in the future, and she's just obsessed mm -hmm. with like 80s rock and roll. Oh, like, okay, I sure, it. I'm, I'm like with that. you. <laughs> so, so every time, so, so I painted her up, mm -hmm. right? And then there were a couple of things that you didn't see because I didn't post the photos um, on CSO, but like I tried to do like the heavy metal on the arm. Mm hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And then if you look back, you know, I did the jump jets with all like, you know, the OSL on there and stuff like that. So, yeah, I, I, very, and very then cool. the of course, I, I glued her to the base. I put her on a 40 mil just because, you know, the, the plumes smoke a little large. Um, awesome. Mm -hmm. So, and this is painted after there's, a, I can't remember the name of the book, but this is off of the book cover. And, and I wish I could remember if someone mm -hmm. knows in the audience. Um, it's like a Jenner, Blanking like a, uh, it's a, it's a, a Merrick, it's a it's a Merrick militia Jenner that's getting mm -hmm. smoked by her. Yeah, that and I don't yeah. remember the cover of the title. Um, well, isn't that on the was it the Snored um, record sheet book too? I think it might be. I think it might be. So where I'm but, um, it. Yeah, I love it. Absolutely love it. So I repainted. Um, this is one of my favorite mechs of all time. Though. Uh, I repeated this. So this is the Marauder, and that is in 12th regular Hussar. That's and that's awesome. what they wanted. They wanted almost like a chocolate chip camel on that. So that's what. And this I, is I a metal a good, one, by the way. I love a good camo. <laughs> I love I a good love camo it. on a mech. This is my dad's. My dad does not like Battletech at all, but he loves it. But, so he, he, I love this too. I love the Marauder. I love the shape of this mech. And that's actually an Iron Wings. Uh, Matt. It's um, it's one of those the even even the original Rao Partha one, just an a solid design. And I know it came from the the other game, but um, right, right. Because I'm gonna get like 50 messages if I don't say that. They'll say, oh, you yeah. know, it came from this originally. Yes, yes, okay, I'm very so aware that it came from <laughs> that. But it's it's a right. great design. It was a great design in the other game. It's a great design in BattleTech, and the model the model is awesome. You know, some of the Ral Partha models really don't hold up very well, but the Marauder does. They've redone it so nice. I think it has a, a soul of its own. Honestly, mm -hmm. um, it has definitely some influences. I, I am a sucker for that. Other, I used to read the comic books and the manga, and I used to watch the, the I used to watch the crap out of out of that series too. I won't, I won't get into that. <laughs> um so um so that's when i repainted and then of course last but not least um this bad boy here um everybody right right with, Kina. Yeah. heck yeah everybody and, 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 yeah and then jade falcon color so i mean you know you have to paint i mean i love jade falcon um like i said i love bad guys just because bad guys tend to be um my silver one i'm working on oh well, yeah see, <laughs> fantastic i love the turkina i've actually got um that's that'll, that'll be my third one. I actually have a fourth one in the box that's that's waiting. So it'll, I'll eventually have a star of Turquinas. It's gonna yeah. be pretty awesome. <laughs> uh, I love it. it's near near and dear. I mean, this is nasty on the table too. Um, it uh, I love I love BattleTech because there is no good guy technically. They all do horrible things to each other, um, and and it's just kind of uh, that's kind of interesting about the whole ip but you know and then there's some factions that are particularly bad um but i like i don't know i like villains because villains tend to be more more dynamic I yeah guess. more complicated characters i suppose you could say and it's part of um, the appeal of the universe is that it's not just good and good and bad and that kind of simplistic view of the universe it's kind of like game of thrones before game of thrones was cool yeah, it's like yeah. everybody has yeah. shades of gray and even even right. the bad guys you can point out oh jade falcons are horrible right. and like yeah yeah but they're also fighting right. horrible people too <laughs> so exactly. they're all just they're all just not people you'd want to be with right right 
I mean, yeah, I mean, every and it's and it's so funny because it's it's all the way around, right? So, um, so I, I particularly enjoy that. But yeah, that was the submission that I did for CSO. Um, they had you know feedback on the suits. I had to redo another model for them. Um, but that's their that's their stipulation. So I did two unrepresented units, um, and that was my interpretation of of those. They loved it, and and that kind of spiraled me on to, you know, I, I'm almost done with all five. Um, you know, I painted more Dragon's Fury. This one I got to take photos of. We're in the process of working on that. Um, and then, you know, of course, you know, that one was in one of your, I think, one of your videos. Yeah, I think, I think it wasn't that. In, I think it was in the Locust video. Yeah. Um, and then, you know, I had. This will be coming in at some point, the longbow as well. We will do the longbow at some point, so we'll uh, hang on to that okay. one. <laughs> <laughs> um, and um, yeah, so so it's fun. And now that I've done multiple units from unrepresented factions, I'm now allowed to create a faction color scheme of my own and mm. submit it. Mm. So, and that's kind of the next big step. And I don't know if Justin spoke about that a little bit with his He, he did, he kind faction. of mentioned... He's mentioned that uh, it's kind of like the, the 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 brass ring you reach for for the, yeah. the CSO artists. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you paint, you you, you sign this faction, you paint it up, and then you're canonized, and it says created by mm -hmm. CSO Justin Cloud or CSO Suge or CSO, you know, anybody within there, right? So that's canonized, and that'll always be within the IP mm -hmm. that that faction unit scheme. I mean, Brushitos, um, uh, Wolves. Uh, that are painted in that Tiger Strike, that's always going to be there. He's always going to be known as that guy that, that painted that faction, which is really cool. I mean, all of CSO uh, Savage Coyote's stuff, it's always going to be out there, right? Mm -hmm. um, so, so you're leaving a little bit of your like a little bit, a little bit of you behind as well when uh, when you do this, right? And I think that's really fun. So, reasons for getting into CSO or for applying. That's part of it, you know, um, not just for painting, but also to kind of leave a little bit of, uh, of the art behind, which mm -hmm. is important to spread that positivity, you know, among among the rest of, of battle tech as well, to try to kind of like advance this this IP because it is relatively small compared mm -hmm. to 40K and other, other tabletop games. Mm -hmm. So that That's process, cool. by the way, is, is totally different. That's a whole nother story um, that we can get into or not get into, and however you want to want to take this. Um, for it's kind of encouraging to think about like you're building a resource, um, and collectively like you're being able to create something that anybody can go to. And like I want to see what several different artists have interpreted this scheme to be, and then I can yes. pick from that and say, all right, I'm going to do my best to to use this as right. inspiration for my own forces. Um, I love that it's really, really is building this database that's going to be there for the duration, um, right. and and more than just being able to pick your own, uh, pick your own, but you can kind of use it as a stepping stone for your own creativity. Because unlike yeah. uh, Warhammer 40k, you're not really har harmed by painting something the way you want to paint it, and yes. you know, it's I agree. Pretty cool. Yeah, I mean, in the land of CSO. Um, you know, we are painting to a certain, certain, certain scheme, mm -hmm. but at the same time, it's all open to your interpretation. The way that I'm painting a certain color, it's going to be slightly different. Now, if it's vastly different and it doesn't match maybe everybody else's, you know, maybe I need to make a little bit of adjustment, but like I would say 99% of the time, it's really up to your interpretation. I mean, we're talking about a game that you could use like, you know, Starbucks stirs. Mm -hmm. as proxies for maps mm -hmm. you know um which is which is nice that they're so open about things um and i think you know in regards to the colors are very very consistent from artists artists in regards to certain factions the way that they're approached and the color scheme is vastly different like i'm going to be different than 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 uh warrior soul mm -hmm. uh, or faith i'm going to you know he's going to be different than and, and that's going to be different than Savage Cody, Papa Chicken, or Art Light, or Cracker Box, Double the Dog, or really any, you know, or, or Red Piano. Everybody, like everybody's going to approach it a little bit differently stylistically. Oh, yeah. And as, 
as you get more and more exposure, you, you spend more and more time right. on camo specs, you're like, oh yeah, right. I know exactly who painted that mech without even looking. Right. Right. Exactly. That is absolutely a suge. Because it's right, painted right. red, of course. Right, exactly, because it's red. <laughs> and I don't, I don't know how to paint any other color. Don't tell anybody. Um, so it, um, it's really cool. Like, everybody has a little different vibe about them. Uh, I think we all pull, though, from each other's uh, wheelhouses a little bit. Um, and I know a lot of my influence came from, like, Justin, because he, um, you know, that's how I started watching these YouTube videos. Like, I started watching him and how to paint. I think one of the first videos I watched was uh, of his Turkina that he did. He did a, mm -hmm. a, a, a climb of Turkina. Mm -hmm. um, and then he also... Heresy, by the way. Just heresy. What's that? Just heresy. I know. Climb of Turkina. <laughs> it's so bad. Uh, so disappointed. The piano also did a Turkina video, and I think that was Jay Fowler. Mm -hmm. um, so, and his style is like very, very different than everyone else's too. I think he kind of has more like a a grim, dark kind of mm -hmm. vibe. Mm -hmm. His paint, right? Um, so, and uh, you know, some of these are done in contrast paint. Um, others are done with with hand, like with acrylics. Um, mm -hmm. Some of these are done by hand. Others are done with an airbrush. Right, so it's like, you know, like Savage Coyote, for example, he paints exclusively by hand. He does not use an airbrush. Uh, God and Davian almost exclusively entirely uses an airbrush. And the styles are completely different. Mm -hmm. I don't know how he's able, I mean, and both of them, I don't know how, how Ross glazes the way he does, and I don't know how, how God Davian is able to get that kind of fading and blending he does with an airbrush, but he does. So it, it's cool to see um, the, uh, the different styles and and you know and then like um, Arclight does almost everything I think he correct me contribute into the into the comments stream he does almost everything exclusively with like washes and mm. inks mm. and I think he's like the only people I know that does like inks and varnishes to kind of get the effect that he's getting and it's absolutely cool yeah, you can do some pretty amazing things with with washes and stuff like yeah. and this is kind of an interesting thing to point out to the Battletech community, which is kind of really hasn't been kind of deeply involved in painting until relatively recently, where like yeah. I've talked to people in my Discord channel, like, hey, have you, that's a really cool paint job. I like what you have there. Have you tried a wash? And they're like, what's a wash? I'm like, right. yeah. let me introduce you to the amazing <laughs> thing called a wash. You're going to love it. Yeah. So it's really yeah. cool to have a community that's it's kind of just getting into it um and you have there's so much cool stuff out there and i'm yeah. really looking forward to seeing all the mechs because as more players get yeah. into it more and more right. talented people are jumping in and really pushing things and it's going to push everybody forward and it's kind of cool right. it's going to force I me totally to get agree. force me to be a better painter hopefully <laughs> we'll see. Painter. It's, it's 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 there it's a lot of fun to see these different styles like i'll show you something and this is like, excuse me, this is why I brought all these out. So, um, uh, let me see. Let's go back to the awesome. So, so this is almost exclusively with bale red contrast paint. It's underpainted black and white. And then that stripe is per actual gray. And then I faded it up and masked it off. And I faded it up, right? So there's a, there's a blend of different things going on here, mm -hmm. right? Airbrush stuff. And I almost exclusively use contrast paint out of an airbrush. If anyone is listening or if they're interested in getting an airbrush to do this contrast, I, I cannot recommend it enough. Yeah, they it, it, well. it prevents basically all coffee, coffee staining with contrast paints. And if you underpaint a model, um, doing contrast over it really brings out blending and it makes the job mm -hmm. so much easier. So, and there's it's, a, it's, there's for a, Another option is the uh, Pro Acryl has a transparent yeah. paint, which is basically yep. the same kind of thing where we're right. using transparent ink. Awesome out yes. of an airbrush. They don't clog yes. it and then you don't have right. to worry too much about anything. Exactly. It it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. Lots same, of really cool stuff with, out there. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I mean, same with like um, I use, we can get into that a little bit later, but there are a lot of different techniques that I use now that my, my painting style has kind of evolved over time. Um, like for example let's see here uh we we're talking about washes and inks and stuff i've got like this is tommy law from renegade hpg 
Uh, I think Travis is, cool. is the guy that does that. Mm -hmm. um, I, I want to, I don't know for certain, but Tommy's from Japan and I think he does contrast as well as a blend of acrylics for mm -hmm. this. Really cool. I commissioned this from him. I wanted a Black Knight that looked like the exact one that was on the card game card, the one that's on there. Mm -hmm. So that, that and, I, and I love collecting other people's work. Uh, this is Justin's. He made this for me. Um, this is a mix of acrylics and wash washes contrast. Mm -hmm. It's a beautiful um, purple and black. Beautiful model. Did a great nice. job with that. that yeah, his um, his cockpit glasses. Amazing. Oh yeah, he's a boss when it comes to that. Like I, I don't know how he does that, but he does a fantastic job. And then um, this is one of of art lights. Locus two C. Um, oh. beautiful, beautiful job that he did. And I mean, it's it's yeah, I mean, it's super impressive work for him. He does. Mm -hmm. I'm a sucker for gray, and that cockpit's amazing. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely, those guys definitely worth if, if you have time and if they're willing to to chit chat with you. Absolutely. Um, I know. I know. Arc Light just started a um, um, a Twitch stream. Mm. So cool. he's, he's doing it now. You know, Justin's got his YouTube. Um, and then Tommy, I don't know, I don't know if Tommy does anything. It may be a little bit harder to reach out to because he's in Japan. So 13, mm -hmm. 14 hours ahead of us. Um, well, I know Travis talks to him a decent amount because he's doing all the mission work mm -hmm. for, for Renegade KG. Um, but everyone kind of has a different style and everyone kind of like, uh, I know for me, uh, I'm, I'm exploring and experimenting now with different techniques and, and different styles. Um, I will be taking pictures of this to post on CSO if, uh, if they're cool with it. Um, this is a Comstar Crockett nice. that I worked on. Um, and this one is like in like a grim dark kind of style. I like right? that. I, I think um, the Calm Guard with the white really lends itself to that grittier look. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, you know, you got some brown, you know, and we're talking about washes. Mm -hmm. This has like brown enamel washes on it, enamel inks. It's got red enamel inks in it. I put black on. I mean, you name it. Like it's been it's been doused in all different kinds of enamels, mm -hmm. and they're great because you underpaint it in acrylic, and then you do the enamel wash. The enamel wash will stain the paint a little bit, mm -hmm. but you can wipe it all down with mineral spirits. And there's something so rewarding about like you paint this thing and then you totally sub almost like submerse it in this black or this dark color, and then you go in with a sponge and you start wiping it off and you're like oh my gosh like look at the the fading you get and look at the highlights and look at all the color that's kind of like blossoming and blooming out of mm -hmm. this out of this cool. dirty mess that you just created so um yeah there's so many opportunities to do so many different things um in in this uh in the community that uh you know if you get bored painting a certain way man you should try something totally different Right. Yep. And then a lot of people that are on your Discord, like right, in the paintings uh, channel, right? Um, you know, they see these things, okay, well, I'll try that out. Right. And then you get into a group and what style you absolutely love. Right. Mm -hmm. And then, and then just take off from there. So, it's really is cool. there, is there a mech that's not out yet that you're really looking forward to painting? You're like, when that, when that comes out in plastic, you're going to be all over that. Well, okay, so so there are things I'm allowed to talk about. Yeah, so don't <laughs> don't, don't yeah, don't don't <laughs> divulge anything, but just say there, hypothetically, there. if there was a mech coming out in the future, this is what I would want to. This is the one I want to paint. Like for example, I, for me, I, I would want to paint. I, I cannot wait to paint the Ion Sparrow. Like I I want that mech. Yeah. I want a full star of it, and they're all just going to look awesome in the Steel Falcon colors. But I, I totally agree with you. I do not, may not may not have one of those um or know someone that I, I can maybe or not grab that from um I, it's very similar to because I, I i guess i can show kind of show this now because it came out for gen con um but i painted for the gen con diorama a fifth sort of light um savage wolf oh, yeah. that iron winds just came out with um and i i painted one for the diorama and I'm working on another one that um, has that looks like it. Um, Very cool. And uh, this one may or may not happen to be Larrick Ward's Savage Wolf. Um, 
that that came from a photo that may or may not got leaked as an AI art leak image, kind of. Now, if you, um, if you hit it with a blowtorch and it doesn't melt, it must be Alex. <laughs> it definitely is. Oh, yeah, it's totally the, the is. The plot armor yeah. con converts also to the mech, so you're, you're <laughs> yeah, good to go. Uh, there was an image that got leaked not too long ago with uh, with the Savage Wolf painted in his colors for his mm -hmm. mech, as well as a Timberwolf in, in uh, SLDF colors, mm -hmm. which was really wild. And I may or may not have painted that one too. Um, Very cool. And that one, that's a, that I, I, I can't debut it. I can't really show it a whole lot because okay. I don't know if like they're going to change the, that's okay. um, you know, the paint. I don't even know if they're going to really. They may decide that. Oh yeah, that was a league, and we're not going to do that anymore. But I mean, it's pretty hard to to hide that now because I think that photo of Larry Ward Savage Wolf is like basically mm -hmm. all over the internet. So it's kind of. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. But uh, I'm super stoked. I was still super stoked about that. Um, there, there are a couple other things down the pipe that um, that I have uh, in plastic right now that uh, that I will be working on. That I'm very excited to to debut. Yeah. Um, I'm trying to think of what other models that I yeah. have. I'm excited um, to see some of those. Like I, I've kind of been up on the soapbox yelling that you you have yeah. to get ill clan era mechs and the dark age mechs right. out like right now right. like right. Good, exactly the mechs drive interest and if you want people yeah. to buy into ill clan you have to get the mechs on the table um I and agree. there's just so many cool dark age mechs you start getting those um the the totem mechs from jade falcon and the the really cool the combine yeah. mechs just there's some really cool stuff out yeah. there, and when people see it in plastic, it's going to blow their minds. Yes, I totally agree with you. I think um, the the um, just kind of building up on that hype, and then hopefully, uh, and I can either confirm or deny it, but if they build up that hype to align with another IP that happens to do Mech Warrior plans that's coming out by the end of the year. Um, you know to kind of align it with that you know it's mm -hmm. like some of the you know because a lot of kids that are that are into video games they're going to be like oh man, just like how i got started with painting yeah. they're going to be piloting these these mechs and they're going to be like man it'd be so cool if i had like a display case full of the mechs that i absolutely love yeah. or like a like a dresser full of these little dudes that like that's the one I use all the time, and it's so good. Mm -hmm. um, and that actually influenced what I painted for my submission. So, like for example, like Battle to like, rewinding just a little bit, the Marauder that I painted, mm -hmm. that was like the only mech I used in Battle Tech, the um, the Hairbrain Schemes game. Like I exclusively used that mech on in that game, just because the bonus. <laughs> yeah. Like I mean, it's a head, it's a headshot monster. Yeah. So. Um, and then it gives you know bonuses to, to gunnery for all your other all your mm -hmm. other pilots. Um, I mean you can call shots like across the map. I mean it gets kind of ridiculous as long as you have a spotter. Um, so yes, I totally agree with you. I really hope that they kind of align that with stuff coming out in the fall. Yeah. Uh, and uh, you know they, they kind of kind of jump on that. And I think most guys and you know maybe you agree, maybe you don't, but. I think a lot of a lot of folks are kind of stuck in succession wars as well as plan invasion those are kind of the big two yeah right yeah um, i occasionally run into people on like when i mention something from the ill clan era or even the dark age i get angry comments in youtube like right, the right. timeline ended in 3056 right. like okay, okay. <laughs> you're really it's angry right. for something that right. happened 20 years ago that really doesn't matter right. <laughs> right, right, or, or the word that we shall not say, because it'll get demonetized. Yeah, um, you know there there are um, there are other areas that that have so many awesome mechs that that are in like um, the lament. Yeah, is one that I think of, um, and I know Justin, for example, um, he got his big start into tabletop gaming with um, Hero Clips, Dark mm -hmm. Age Hero. Clips. Mm -hmm. So, and, you know, I can't remember which mechs, but I mean, some of those mechs, you know, haven't made a reappearance um, yeah. in plastic. When, when we see the Shrike and, and right. uh, oh gosh, there's just so many cool mechs that yeah. if people are willing yeah. to take the leap and, and take a chance, they're going to discover there's some real fun to be had. Uh, we just start right. putting partial wings on things and plasma rifles right. and 
yeah. just yeah, yeah, just totally wreck you're... someone's whole plan. Oh, I've got this perfectly heat scale balanced Omni mech. I'm gonna destroy yeah. you, and then yes. suddenly you drop six heat on them on a single turn, and then blow their whole plan. Oh. Yeah. Well, it's funny you mention that because I have a friend of mine, uh, Mike, who um, he, he always complains when he played at Southern Assault last year. Uh, he ran into a guy, and I, and I think it was one of the CGL guys, uh, someone in the audience may know, um, that had a mech, or a, I'm sorry, a, a whole group of mechs for his team that were all heat based. And, and he, it was just lay heat down on every single one of his mechs, and he couldn't mm. do a single thing about it. Couldn't move, couldn't shoot, you know, couldn't do anything. So it's like it basically paralyzed everybody on the table. Mm. Um, it just slowly whittled, whittled them down. So, uh, you know, yeah, don't underestimate so that, that technique. <laughs> when in doubt, and apply heat. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> So, oh. yeah. So, so, I mean, that's kind of my foray. Go ahead. Sorry. No, go ahead. Go for it. Uh, that's kind of my foray into how, how, you know, my interest in CSO. I got into CSO, all the cool variety, the things that you can do within CSO. Um, and then, uh, you know, if anyone is, 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 ha you know, interested, you know, do it. Or reach out. Head, go to the, the Camel Specs online Discord, talk to people, share yeah. your work. Be willing to take yeah. critique and, I, and show I, your yeah. your eagerness to improve and who knows your stuff could be on camel spec someday yeah absolutely yeah you know it so you know that whole process it's um it's funny uh, the painting the mechs part at least for uh cso like that's really only the tip of the iceberg right because you have to um they have to be based they got to be on terrain. You have to have a backdrop or some kind of terrain that, that you know, obscures the back, the back mm -hmm. of the image. So you have to know photography, right? Can uh, you could you could do it with a, with a phone. And I know a lot of guys that do a great job, like all of our clients photos are with the phone mm -hmm. and they're beautiful photos. Mm -hmm. um, I just, I don't know how to use, I have an iPhone 14 Pro. I am not a pro. It's, I'm horrible at using the phone for photos. Um, so I have I have a, a strobe set up with tripods and um, and a Sony A6000 that I take all my photos on. And I put it on a delay mm -hmm. so that there's no shape. But learning ISO, F-stop, you know, photo set. Um, learning like proper um, photograph composition is another skill that like I had to, I, I yeah. bought a book. That's a big one. Like having, taking, taking community uh, pictures and adding them to videos. I often have to kind of do a, Hey, you know, try this and have it, you know, it doesn't okay. need to be right smack in the middle. Have it slightly right. off. Like, yeah. All that composition stuff that when you do it for a long time, it just kind of is automatic. Yes. Uh, really isn't, isn't something that's odd that, that is automatic for many people. So it's, it's a skill Agreed. like anything else you learn how to, how to compose a photograph to make it look yes. looks good. Um, yeah, you could yes. take a, you could take a pretty crummy looking Mac and, and photograph it in a way that it actually looks pretty dang solid. Um, if you're, yeah. if you're creative enough, you know, I think like to, uh, hot take on this one and I'll, I'll be the one to say it and they can, you know, CSO, the guys can flame me for this if they want to, it's fine. Um, you know, there is some stuff that you can do post like processing of images mm -hmm. to to kind of like clean things up. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's like you know, in some of my photos, I don't know if you noticed, but like my you have my terrain, the floor, right? Mm -hmm. okay. Do you want me to like take 30 seconds to grab something really quick to explain what sure. we're talking about? Yeah, sure. Okay. okay. Like, yeah, so one of the cool while he's doing that, um, one of the things I often tell people when they submit photos for videos is uh, you know, don't put the Mac right smack in the middle and then crop it, crop it out. And oftentimes you can get a better photograph if you take the picture from further away, especially with newer, the newer cell phone cameras are really horrible with focus. They like hyper focus. So you can actually be taking a picture and the, the front of the Mac is in focus, but the barrel is blurry. And you wouldn't get that with a traditional camera, but you get it with digital cameras. 
because they're such so high tech that they they're able to do that when, but when you're photographing such a small thing it can make part of the mech blurry and part of it not but if you take the picture from further back and then crop out all the extra area around it you'll get a better photograph so it's a nice little kind of handy trick that i've learned as i've been fighting yeah. fighting with my cell phone to get decent pictures there's that in progress oh, guillotine oh, come on. come on focus there you go so he's nice. Merrick camo. Yeah, that's my phone. Love it. Love it. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Just yeah, one it's... of like 50 different projects that are that are underway here. Yeah. yeah, I've got I've got a pile of shame myself. Buckets of shame. Buckets and buckets. So so let's just say like you're taking a photo, right? I, I personally like using circular wooden, like almost like you put them on the wall for our projects, like placards mm -hmm. or stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you base them, you can airbrush them or just spray them and then you can put some sand on it, white with glue, right? So so a lot of the photos I take, I use these as bases because they're so modular and so easy mm -hmm. to, to just paint one of these up, right? I can put them in a pile in my garage and then just like little bases on the bottom of these guys, right? You can, you can, same concept, mm -hmm. same exact concept, mm -hmm. right? And then let's say I want to put like a big rock on it. Right. Ta da. Right. And then I can go into Photoshop after I'm done doing the photos, the raw photo, and I can go in and I can heal and edit out mm -hmm. the scene. Right. So then it looks like it's, you know, one thing. Yeah. Right. Or I can do that, or I could, I could take one of these, put it on there like that, do the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Right. And, and if I have like three or four of these, let's say I have like a Red Canyon or a Martian desert kind of thing. I've got a polar landscape one. I've got a beach one. I've got uh, I've got a, an urban cityscape kind of one. I have one that I painted a road on. So you have all of those, and they're all like this. And then you can put the buildings on. Like let's say I want to do this, and what do I do with it? Uh, I thought I brought the little factory, but you could put like factories on here, mm -hmm. or you can put other like tents or other models, and then you just you know you can heal the lines, and then. You know, you can you can get so much mileage out of at stuff like this, right? Yeah, and as you take um, pictures, you're going to collect those kinds of things. Yeah, exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah, it's, and that's fun too, right? Because if you think about it, not just are you photographing the model, but you're photographing like you, you're like, okay, well, this green model would probably look really nice mm -hmm. against like a red desert, yeah. right? Yeah. You know, um, yes, okay. You know, camouflage. You want the model to be camouflaged within its environment but sometimes that doesn't necessarily translate well yeah. on the screen when you're looking for like you know an exact um you know uh scheme and honestly i mean these things are giant in real life yeah, man, <laughs> yeah i don't think it really matters yeah i've had that discussion like, with people like oh that camo with that camo you'll be spotted far far away I'm like it's a gigantic <laughs> mech right. that is going to show up on infrared from 10 right. miles away. The, ca right, exactly. the camouflage is, is per <laughs> it's, it's purely yeah. symbolic. You could paint it in <laughs> glitter. It would not matter. It's five story. My so, internet connection just burped there. Sorry. It should be fixed oh, now. Yeah. Was that me or was that you? you that there? was me. My internet connection just burped, but it should be back okay. now. There we go. There we go. Are you there? Can you yep. hear me? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Perfect. All right. So, so yeah, I mean, and that's the other part I love about it, the creative aspect is like, you can, you can do so much stuff like, you know, with the models and the terrain and the, the photography, and, you know, you don't have to just shoot it at a 45 degree angle. You get a more dynamic shot and feet. Actually, mm -hmm. Warrior Sword of Pain I ever see, he kind of, he, he definitely got me on that that idea. Because I was taking photos when I first got started at like 45 degree angle. He's like, why don't you start like doing different compositions, like a more dynamic mm -hmm. look, make these models look like they're really, really big and give them like interesting poses and angles and stuff like yeah, that, right? Something it's just like, like yeah, there's an art, there's a digital artist, an uh, artist's empire who does, he mostly does kind of paint overs where people send him photos of their, whatever their model, mostly Warhammer, but occasionally he'll do a, a battle mech. Um, 
but he does the like the whole Photoshop treatment and kind of make the model look like it's in universe. But he's always right. telling people, stop taking it, taking pictures from a 45 degree angle, start taking right. down looking up shots on these massive machines, right. make it look right. like they're massive machines and it'll be a much more impressive picture. Um, yes. So yes. pretty cool. There's a photo I took that I, that I still love to this day. It's, um, I can, I can send it in the, uh, in the chat really okay. quick. Um, it, this is on, on camo specs and locusts are tiny. They're 20 ton little buggers that are supposed to scout and spot and, and maybe do some riot control to promise combine reference there. Um, and you know, they're not meant to be big, but if you take it from a certain angle, and you take it with certain pieces of terrain, mm -hmm. it really brings out the scale of the model. This thing, mm -hmm. if you had a person standing next to it, it, it would probably be about maybe 20, 30 feet tall, maybe. It's not a huge mech, mm -hmm. um, but you know, like I said, you put it in its in its frame of reference and you give it that scale. Um, and uh, and I think that's part of part of the, the fun part too, is like you're creating a story with these photos, right? Mm -hmm. And and you're you're you you're eliciting an emotional response from someone to like, oh wow that's mm -hmm. cool i can totally see that being in the jungle uh whatever or you know the jungle's a hunter or whatever the case may be mm -hmm. you know or or it may be somewhere on on terra or, or somewhere out on some martian mm -hmm. landscape or on the moon or something, or something. And it, yeah and it's really good that we start seeing pictures like that because it's what gets people into the game they say, right. wow, what is that? That's really cool. I want to do that. And yeah. it's yeah. just, I, I say the same thing about um, uh, some of the stuff from Shimmering Sword, um, some of the digital art, just amazing stuff that's really showing how dynamic these machines could be. And not, yes, it's kind of leaning toward the walking tank thing, but there's a dynamic aspect to it. And you're seeing the weapons and, and the, the PPC right. blast and all that stuff. It's much more dynamic scene than people are assuming. And it's creating that picture and saying, okay, well, these aren't just little mechs on the table. These are battle mechs that are fighting over the, over the control of the planet. And, you know, it helps people create that, that image in their mind. Yeah. So definitely going to get yeah. people more into the game once we see more and more yeah. of that. Oh, it's really it immerses cool. them completely. So yeah, I, I absolutely love it. It's it's um it's been it's been so much fun to do that side. Um and yes, I mean I, I would I would be be lying to you if um if I didn't say that it was uh easy and that it wasn't a lot of work, right? Oh sure. And you know this yourself because of your videography and editing and, mm. and writing scripts and, and all the stuff that you're doing. But um, you know, Myself included, I kind of have like a passion for this. Oh yeah. You, oh, you yeah. have to care about it. I mean, right. if if it were, I mean, you're doing it. You're doing it for volunteer. I'm making less than right. I, I could go down yeah. to the McDonald's and make more. Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, so it has to be about passion. You have to care about the IP, and you have to be wanting to contribute to something that will hopefully last beyond us. Um, this yeah. my my greatest fear as a Gen Xer is the 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 generation of BattleTech fans dies off and the game just goes with it because it just hasn't been passed on um, and thankfully that fear has been abated in the last few years since the the last two successful Kickstarters um, but I, I really want to make sure the game lasts beyond us and yeah. I'm certainly going to keep going at it and trying to and to to do my yeah. part to try to keep it going yeah. and I know many are, others are as well. I it's, agree. it's yeah it's very exciting to be in conversations with people who are like you're as not so crazy about this ip as yeah. i am and that's awesome yeah yeah it's so funny like maybe it's an obsession but i like it i mean it's at least a relatively healthy one. Oh yeah instead of you know like instead of being obsessed about other things i suppose um but yeah i think i think for me the biggest part is like you know that the engagement with the community um and the creativity aspect of it, being able to express myself like in this in this art form, um, mm -hmm. is so much fun. Um, and uh, you know, kind of like I said, spreading that that positivity around too. So mm -hmm. it's it's been really 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 fantastic experience. So cool. Uh, did you want to did you want to talk a little bit about how to apply? 
Sure. And, and yeah. Well, if someone wants to get into CSO, what are they going to do? So we talked a little bit about uh, you got to paint five models, right? Um, one of them needs to be unrepresented on on the website, and I can I can send a link to to that other stuff submissions and unrepresented units list and. I think it's kind of funny. There are a couple of factions on here that are that do have photos, and there are a couple of factions on here like, well, there's several of them that could be the same. So, like, uh, first, Calm Guard, right? Mm -hmm. Everybody in Calm Guard either paints camo or parade white. So it's just the the symbol is different, right? Mm -hmm. So this is unrepresented technically because this is first Calm Guard. I don't know if you can see it, but the emblem, mm -hmm. right? Um, so I have a few of these. Um, I've got. The um, the premium black knight that I did, so I'm playing around with this as Very well. Cool. And I did this in a premium dark. I don't know if I'll accept this. It may be too rough, but I like it a lot. It's it's cool. great. So I appreciate it. Yeah, this one, and I got little antenna. That was fun. Um, and then I also did a more of a premium dark vibe. Um, the thug as well. The so, thug lends itself to that kind of grim dark look. Right. It's, oh, yeah. it's such oh, a yeah. brutalist machine. Yeah. Just like it, fun pure function looks yes. looks looks very rough it's great if if i was a pilot in the com guard this would be up there on my list all through honestly i painted these because these are mixed i would pilot um you know this is great as a command unit um and then the crockett crockett and the thug share a lot of things in that they have long range mm -hmm. capability mm -hmm. but then they've got those srm packs that'll just wallop you once you get close in range mm -hmm. um I love both of those. Of course, Crockett's uh, jump capable, and then the Thug um, is not, right? And then the Thug has probably has the range on the Crockett, given that it has ER PPCs versus the ER larges. Um, but uh, anyway, um, five units, get distracted. Five units, one up unrepresented, um, and they have to be based. Uh, obviously, they have to be painted, backdrops, or kind of some kind of scenery some kind of uh, terrain with it. Um, and then you, you don't have to give like front and back photos, although those are nice, um, but basically one photo of each model, um, you know, composed, um, you know, the best you can and um, and then submitted and they get submitted to Double O Dog. He's our kind of like our captain, our, our head boss. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, they get they get set up for submission, and or set up for uh, in a list, and then all of us we will vote on on the submission as mm -hmm. as a as a total package, and each one of us gets a vote. Uh, no one gets like more of a vote than everyone else, so it's it is a one hundred percent democratic process. It's like being on a pirate ship, total democracy, um, and um, it's majority vote basically so um and uh you know I, I can't honestly i can't remember what the majority number is but it, it definitely is majority vote and um there has only been just just as a heads up for anyone watching there has only been one artist and i don't even know their name who has gotten in on the first image so i was going to ask so, about that it's not like a one and done thing where you where where no. you you it's definitely much more of like a here's what you could do to improve and then try again and we'll see what we can do like it's it's much more like a process rather than a uh like a contest or something where like oh nope you're right. out and then you're just move on yeah, with your life so so like like tips and tricks and justin and i have gone justin and i have gone over this before it'd be great to have him on to kind of get his take mm -hmm. on that as well um you don't want to paint five mechs in Comstar White or five mechs in in SLDF Green or Jade Falcon Green or or Davin, you know. Don't don't paint five urban mechs in the same exact color. I love them though, but but they're gonna ask you. It's basically like if you went to like a restaurant and you asked for the tasting menu and you're the chef and, and you're giving them like a five course meal of different things you're giving them a tasting of of what you can do as an artist and um you know your style and and you know you can do different things like 
Can you paint non-metallic metal? Can you do um, surface to, to atmosphere non-metallic metal? Um, can you do like, you know, um, canopy glass, like two-tone? Can you do that? Can you can you use different mediums? Can you do pigments? Can you use um, washes? Can you use uh, acrylics? Can you use contrast paints? Can you use inks? Um, do you know how to do stuff like techniques like chipping? Do you know how to do techniques like, um, uh, you know, like zenithal highlighting and underpainting and, and putting on decals? Can you do freehand? I mean, that's, that's, that's. It might come in useful app. for some of those new Corita mechs. Right, yeah. <laughs> so, um, you know, those Otomos, man, those are cool. I don't even want to touch those. Maybe one day. Oh, it'll be a blast. Um, yeah. Um, <laughs> But like those are those are the things that CSO is looking for. They're looking for someone who has a wide variety of of uh, talent and, and ability because like Catalyst will come to uh, to the crew and say, "Hey, we need these factions painted for the um, the force manuals that come out mm -hmm. on Catalyst's website, mm -hmm. and we need all these factions done." see who wants to do it see who can do it and this is when you have to do it by yeah. so they want to see that not only can you paint but um different techniques different skills as well as like can you can you do a decent amount of turnaround time yeah the dead working um, to a deadline you know good right. good life skill yeah. right? Right. Yeah. right and have i mentioned this volunteer <laughs> <you know? laughs> again so, you have so to you be have passionate to about what you do right so, so you have to have a love for doing this kind of stuff, right? Mm -hmm. And um, so they'll they'll judge them all, right? And um, 99 out of 100 times they're going to be like, okay, you know, you were this close. This is why, um, you know, your submission was not accepted to be a an artist within the the community. And this is why, right? Because it doesn't make any sense to say, oh yeah, I just don't like it. I just yeah. don't like this person's paint job. That that wouldn't or, be very or, constructive. Yeah, Right. So, so why, right? Explain why you don't, or why, what you think can be improved, or what do you think the the the, the person did fantastic, right? So, like, usually I break it down into, here's what I love about this person's submission. Well, you know, one, two, three, based on X, Y, and Z, right? And then I'll say, hey, here here are things that I think that the artist could could emphasize or work on for the future, right? Um, and X, you know. X, Y, Z, one, two, three, right? Um, and then um, once you're in, it, it, it usually, um, you know, some people take more than one. I think I submitted twice and then got in on the second second one. Um, and then there are some people that take four or five times. And I still have no idea who that person was that got in on the first try. I've been bugging everybody to tell me. They will not tell me. It'll, be a, it'll be a legend. Giant secret, <laughs> giant secret. But, um, you know, so so it take you know for some people it takes a lot longer. Other times people not. But um, the important part is yes, competencies, which is which is important. You know, different skill sets, but also mm -hmm. like you handle critique. You oh, know, yeah. like, if if someone says, "Hey man, I don't I don't like the way you made that flame and yon. It was too much garlic or too much salt or not enough pepper." You know, okay, that's great. Maybe next time I'll I'll make that steak a different way. It's the same exact thing. It's painted. They didn't like. The crew didn't like this because I painted it incorrectly, right? I mean, and and I was sad because I love that ocean. I love yeah, that beaches. Um, so, beaches but right. but you know, but it is what it is. You know, how how do you take it? Yeah, because right? really, it's more than just the painting. You're also joining a community, and right. part of yeah. part of that is being able to take criticism without right. throwing a tantrum exactly. or, or losing your right. mind. Yes, exactly. That's that is so important. Um, you know, because it also is about fit, right? Mm -hmm. If if you're, if you're like button heads with everyone within the group, then you know, you, you know, creating that toxic environment for everyone else because you know you're high on your own supply, thinking that you're like the you know the greatest painter since you know I don't know Michelangelo or whatever. You know, like that's not, and that's not beneficial for the community, either, right? I mean, mm -hmm. you know, that's 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 not the greatest thing. Um, so. Um, they'll, they'll get back at you and then tell you what you need to improve or, you know, what they absolutely love. Um, like I said, I had to repeat that one model. There were some little things that I had to adjust, 
Um, and so I did it. And, and then I ended up rolling with it. Um, and then, uh, you know, once you're in, the submission process and the critique, that doesn't stop once you're in. Yeah. It's like, you know, it's not like you're, you're just, okay, you know, I painted this thing and accept me, you know, witness me, right? It's got to be, you know, publish it now. It's not the way it works, right? right. It mm -hmm. still goes through a, a quality control process and a critique process um, to make sure that the standard or the quality of the models within the website are still, you know, up to a certain standard within, mm -hmm. within the, the entire website. So, um, has there been discussion about the drop ships and painting those? Oh, yeah. I'm, oh, yeah. I'm curious to see how different artists would tackle that because it's a much, much larger model. That'd we be cool. we have an artist, I think it was uh, Whack Rabbit. Um, he's out of your way, by the way. He's on the West Coast. Huh? Um, I think he's out in Seattle. Okay. Um, who, um, he just painted one in a, like a splinter candle pattern. That mm -hmm. looks absolutely beautiful. Um, we haven't really there. I don't think there's really any general consensus on what the drop ships should be colored as. I, I think, yeah, I, I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I don't want to speak. For it, it'll them. be a fun. It'll be a fun yeah. challenge. Yeah, I, I think so too. I think it'd be a fun challenge to take photos of because they're so big. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not sure how how they're going to approach that. I do know that those are in the works. Mm -hmm. And I don't know if they sold any during Gen Con, like the unions. I don't. I don't know if the union drop ships. I haven't seen any. Yeah, neither have I. So I don't know if they're coming yet. So, yeah, so kind of cool. They're coming. We'll see. Yeah, for sure. So very exciting. Cool. Um, let's see here. We kind of hit the major, major stuff we wanted to hit. Um, is there? Something you're excited about for the Ill Clan era? Um, I know we t mostly talked about kind of painting and models and stuff, but uh, story wise, what do you want to see next in the Ill Clan era? I want to see everyone pounce on, on, on the group that's at the top of the end right now, is what I want to say. You know, because. You know, history, you know, because you, you know history, like history repeats itself over and over and over again. And there's always going to be like a superpower and then that superpower wanes and fades. And and then somebody else comes into play and the dynamic shifts. And, you know, you're only you're only the, the top of the amp pile for so long until someone else bumps you off. Sure. So so what I'm excited to see is um, like like how long, like basically Clan Wolf can hold on to being like, you know, like, you know, Larry being, you know, the ill clan and, and clan wolf being kind of in charge of everything mm -hmm. and, and seeing kind of, you know, I don't think it's meant to last. No, I no, I don't think it is either. And well, and the, the devs have repeatedly said, what if you hold a star league and no one shows up? Um, right. it's going to be interesting yeah. to see how they, they wrangle that. Um, yeah. I don't know. Maybe maybe Clan Raven, uh, a Raven Alliance, will show up and save the day. Yeah. Uh, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or the, or the new phone company, also known as Sea Fox, will, will, yeah. will do something, be up to no good. You know, or who knows? Yeah. Um, I know for me, I, favorite faction. I know you, you've got a favorite. Do you have like a favorite Inner Sphere as well? I, I don't think I've um, ever heard you say anything. If I had to pick, I'd probably lean toward Karita. Um, just from the kind of cool stories that they've had over over the years, um, yeah, that's it probably probably if I had to pick an inner sphere house to kind of throw, yeah, throw my weight behind, it'd probably be Karita. Yeah. Do you have a least favorite? A least favorite? Yeah. Um, <sighs> inner sphere though. Inner sphere. Probably. Fed Sons. Yeah. Just, it's a little too, too leaning toward a we're the good guys type thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. The, um, the I, most recent book, uh, what was the title? Um, Democles Sanction. Yeah. That was really a really well done book um, that kind of made me maybe soften a little bit on the, on the Fed Sons. Yeah. I know for me, um, 
my, my least favorite, it, but it's also kind of the one I think is kind of funniest in my opinion, um, is uh, Steiner. Because I feel like Steiner is like corporate America and everything that I hate about um, about corporate America. Like the, totally nepotistic, just throwing money at a problem, right? Um, people that, that um, you know, should not be in charge are definitely in charge. No leadership uh, ability whatsoever, you know, but, you know, they're, um, they're nepotistic, you know, political appointees or plants. And, and, you know, their, their way of dealing with a problem is like a lance of fatness or, or, you know, just, like, just you know, rampant bureaucracy. Um, yeah. It's, it's hilarious. Yeah. I think it's funny, and, you know, and, and, you know, I think anyone that works for corporate America, you know, when they see that they're like, yeah, those guys, I can't do it. I can't do it. Uh, but that's, that's just me. That's for me. Um, least favorite, um, uh, plan. I don't know if I really have one. I like to tease on Wolf, but I still paint Beta Galaxy all the time. I love, it. I love the color scheme. I love. They have Wolf some good schemes, ways. and I'll give them that. A lot of the Jade Falcon schemes, and I can say this as a huge Jade Falcon fan. A lot of the Jade Falcon schemes are pretty uninspired, like olive green, olive green and yellow, olive green and, or and shades of yellow leaning toward orange. Just that's why I don't yeah. paint my own my own Jade Falcon so that steel color and then Jade Green yeah. so it's it's much more right. lively I um yeah I, I don't know I love Jade Falcon I love that green and that yellow I get made fun of all the time um by the other CSO guys for painting for painting uh you know that scheme but um I, I I lean more towards like I love the idea maybe it's a romanticized idea of like periphery powers like out there on the fringes of the galaxy yeah. trying to be as free as they can doing their own thing you know um and, and not wanting to get involved with with the palace intrigue and the politics of inner sphere life and yeah. just trying to make it on their own the best they can and and you know talking about like um um you know gosh i'm having a senior moment you know, when, when the SLDM decided to go absorb like everything in the periphery. Um, the reunification war. Yeah, the reunification war is like, like I actually side on the side of the periphery power. Yeah, I think I think many people do just because yeah. really a totally unnecessary conflict. Right. Yeah, <laughs> like, it's like, we're that, basically yeah. we're bored, so we're going to come take right. you. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> we got all this stuff we can right. use to destroy you. We can't yeah. just let it gather dust. Right, right. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I love the idea of like, you know, you're out there. And once again, I mean, I think that ties into Explorer Report, ties into Interstellar Air Solutions, ties mm -hmm. into, um, you know, um, Snores and Regulars. That idea of just like what's out there and, and, and that wanderlust that I have. And that kind of goes back to my personal life as well. I know we didn't talk about that at all. Um, but like, you know, being deployed overseas and, and always, you know, kind of experiencing something new. I still have a little bit of that in my life as well. Like every few years, I'm always thinking because we we uh, had a, a permanent change of station where they call it PCSing in the military. Mm -hmm. Every three or four years, we were going somewhere different. So for me, I, I still kind of have some of that wanderlust um, in my bones. Yeah, and, I, um, and after being somewhere three or four years, like I'm like, well, it's my next adventure. Where should I be? You know, what should I be doing next? So, I've often often recommended the. Um, those as older books, the Interstellar Ops and um, um, Explorer Corps as great yeah. books if for people who want to dig into the old stuff because that's just those smaller, cooler stories uh, yeah. are just waiting to be told. And I, I've occasionally yelled yeah. at the CGL devs, we need more yeah. periphery stories. Um, that's yeah, why, I why, I wrote the, why I wrote the NEC. It's yeah. I wanted to well, tell a yeah. smaller story on the periphery where really just anything could happen and the stakes are small but right. to them the people who are going through it those the stakes yeah. couldn't be higher so it's kind of cool well, that's how i got got hooked into to watching your channel oh was from that story the explorer story thank you um, yeah i just love that the, the adventure and and just you know going out there into the unknown just seeing what's out there to be seen it was, it was the, the whole on my discovery. yeah it was on my bucket list of like Things you things you need to do before I die. Prove you could write a novel. There you go. <laughs> well, yeah. Proved I wrote, could write a novel. It's, yeah. yeah. Um, 
pretty proud of it, even though it, I think it helped build the channel community quite a bit, even if it didn't perform, it didn't put big numbers on the table, but the people who are really passionate about the channel really appreciated it. And that's why, um, that's why we did it. I agree. And, and, and I think it was worth it. I agree. Yeah, Especially I seeing like people who post occasionally people will post their King Crab painted in the NEC white and metallic blue and you got the little well, elemental on top for Vasile. Oh yeah. my god. I'm not yeah. a big I'm not a big crier, but that one that that really yeah. struck pretty close. Yeah, we're getting there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's yeah, it did yeah. He, he was my favorite. He was my favorite. It's just and that's, I love stories like that, that, you know, they do, they elicit a response, yeah. an emotional response, right? Yeah. Those are good stories. Because we, we all begin. do things in our, we all have events in our life that are like, God, I wish I could just go back and fix that one thing. And for him, that one thing was such a devastating yeah. thing that it really did leave him with not much hope. And then as through the course of the story, he, he's building this friendship with with Tenika and, and having his now he has someone to fight for he's he can actually start doing what he what he really wishes he could do back back right. when back when that event happened so yeah. it, it was a pleasure yeah. to to write that character and you know it's funny though like um you know and, and you you bring you bring it out really well in that that uh, story is that a lot of times um you know, yeah, you may have regrets, but it's those negative things in life that, um, you know, you learn from mm -hmm. and they impact you significantly more than the successes sure. and, and they mold you and, and take that right. Mm -hmm. And it's like being fired from a job or something. It's like, mm -hmm. okay, you can, you can dwell on the past and be upset about it. You could also be like, okay, what can I do differently? What mm -hmm. can, what can I do to improve? Right. You know, I don't, I don't, I don't want to get stuck in a rut, right? I don't want to, you know, just wallow in my own despair. Like I, I, you know, I need to keep it moving. And, and how do I change, right? Mm -hmm. and, and and he did that. He may not have intentionally, from the story, maybe intentionally wanted that to happen. But the way that you wrote it, like you kind of found him, right? Mm -hmm. And then that opportunity kind of printed presented itself to him. Mm -hmm. And and then you know, I, I like the idea that you made it out to where like it was, you know. He got drawn into it. It was a conscious decision on his part. It's like, okay, well, maybe I can, um, you know, make a positive impact. Even though, you know, and and I've just, just enjoy it. He know. didn't, wasn't thinking when, when he joined the crew, it wasn't, I'm going to redeem myself and, and fix right. the problems right. in the past. It's, he's making a decision that's, that's based upon his ex previous experience. So it's not like, it's not a, not a conscious decision. It's much more like, you're making the dis the informed decision based upon the events you went through that were devastating at the time. Yeah. Right. So right. all those anytime that, a bad event happens in your life, um, you get fired or you know, like you mentioned, you get fired or you 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 get downsized and you think, oh god, this is all over, and then you find yourself doing something you that's ten times better as a result of that negative right. thing. Exactly. So, exactly. Pretty cool. Yeah, you all been there. Yeah, myself included. I know exactly how that feels. So yeah. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, I love that story. I go on and on about that. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> Do I like talking about my own story? Yes. I I, I'll struggle through it if I need to, but you know, yeah. right? we don't always we don't always toot our own horns, but it's good to remind people you have one every once in a while, right? Yeah, I love it. It's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. So um, let's see here. I feel like we've we've hit all the major stuff. Just Camo Specs is doing doing. What it's doing is going to continue to grow. You're going to pick up artists. Your community is going to keep growing. Um, the it's just really an exciting time. I agree. Yeah, it's a lot so of it, fun. So, is there anything else you'd like to share with the viewers before we say our goodbyes here? Yeah. Please apply. Please, Please apply. apply. Yeah, I, I, you know. I, I said this before in uh, in a conversation I had with Justin, a video that I that I did with him. You know, it, there are so many talented artists out there that that deserve time in the sun. And and you may be timid and be like, oh, my artwork is not good enough. I promise you, it is. 
Like, like, just, just take a step out on that dance floor, and 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 take a chance. Because if you don't, then then you'll never you'll never see it. No one will see it, and and you'll always have that regret that oh man, maybe I should have, right? Because you never know what tomorrow. Will be. Yeah. So, um, you know, seize that moment, as the French say. So there's always um, I, I've said this to students over the years. There's always a million and one reasons to not do something. It's finding the courage to just do it. That is the really tough choice. Um, yes. Like you may not be perfect at it, and and anything we do, if people were perfect the first time they did something, then lucky, lucky them, because most of us, it's not like that. It's so true. It's so true. It takes practice. I mean, it's just like all the stuff that's on, you know, I'm looking at right now on the desk. Like, I mean, you know, this is this is culmination of two years worth of painting literally every single evening or almost every single evening uh, for an hour or two a night. Um, and and there's so many people out there that are amazing artists, but, you know, it's, it's got to get out there and apply it. The more the merrier, honestly. Mm -hmm. Varying mm -hmm. talents and skills, you know, different lenses on on how to interpret these things um, is always really nice. Wonderful. Yeah. Fantastic Great. job, man. I love, I love the channel. Like I said, Thank it you. like really, it really spurred spurred me on i just I'll, what i'll do is i turn it on in the background i listen to the stories it's like, man, i've been told i have a calming voice good yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah i had ha, have had students over the years they're like mr mr mac frog you're you have a very calming voice i just yeah. wish i had you in a later period of the day because i i have you first period and it's sometimes it's hard to stay awake <laughs> Right. <laughs> You're telling a story and it's just a little too easy to just. <laughs> <laughs> a voice made for video or for podcast, for podcast right? <laughs> so. Uh, so I will go ahead and include the Camo Specs link in the video notes. So if you're at all interested in getting your painting uh, looked at, I would say definitely join the Camo Specs uh, Discord. Um, a lot of artists are there hanging out and willing to um, share their thoughts. Even if you're not really at the position where you're ready to submit yet, you're just kind of dipping your toe in the water. That would be a great place to go to get uh, get some some critique and some maybe accolades if you knock their socks off with something creative that you do. So really cool. You will. All right. So I will say a thank you, Sugei, for coming tonight to uh, have our chat. I know it's a lot yeah, later thanks. there than it is here. <laughs> it's all good. It's all good. Uh, but we'll so. we'll chat again, and uh, we'll just can keep enjoying BattleTech and uh, we'll watch it grow. Yeah, same to you, man. Keep killing it. Doing an awesome job. All right. Take care, and Me I'll too. talk to you later. All right.